What's up? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to paint these super, super cool tie-dye style watercolor paintings. In the description below, you'll find a list of all the materials I recommend for this project with links that show you where you can get them. I'm starting with the 11 by 14 inch multimedia paper that I'm going to be doing my paintings on and I'm taking another piece of paper the same size and I'm using it to draw a straight line right across the middle of my paper. Then I'm going to use my best guesstimation abilities to divide my paper into thirds and I'm going to be adding um, evenly spaced lines running from the top to the bottom of my paper. You can see how I'm adding two of them here. Now I'm going to carefully cut out my rectangles. You can do tie-dye patterns on all six of your rectangles, but I'm just going to do the demonstration on these three. Tape each of your rectangles down using the painter's tape. Notice how I'm spacing them apart and taping all four sides of each rectangle. Before I start painting, I'm going to activate my watercolors by using a clean paintbrush to add a drop of water onto each color. Now I'm going to get my first rectangle ready to paint. I'm taking my one inch flat brush and adding a thin, even layer of clear water on my paper. This is called the wet on wet technique. It makes it so the colors I add will bleed and spread onto the paper more readily. I recommend following these exact steps on the first card that you paint. Start by picking up some red paint with your size eight round brush. Paint a dot in the center of your paper. From there, start to paint the beginning of a swirl. But before completing one full rotation, stop and rinse your brush and switch to orange. When I use watercolor paint, I like to use two cups of water to rinse my brush. I use the cup of water on the left for the initial rinse and the cup on the right for the final rinse. Water on the left gets dirty and the water on the right stays fairly clean and I don't need to rinse it as often. Now I'm gonna pick up some orange paint and paint the next part of my swirl. Notice how I'm leaving some space between the orange and the red so there's room for the paint to bleed. This is in part what helps to create this super cool tie-dye effect. Notice how I'm not painting a full circle with the orange. I'm really just painting a half circle and then I'm gonna stop and switch colors. Now I'm gonna pick up some yellow paint and continue my spiral where I left off. Now try to leave just a little bit of space between the color that's already on your paper and the yellow that you're adding. Once again, this space leaves room for the color to expand and bleed as it absorbs into the paper. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush and get ready to switch to light green. Now I'm picking up some light green and I'm continuing my spiral where I left off. You can see here how I'm doing a better job this time, leaving some white space between the yellow paint and the green paint. And stop, I'm only gonna do half circle rotation with this color because I wanna have room to add my other colors. So now that I've added this half circle of light green, I'm gonna switch colors and move on to the darker green. Woo, darker green, here we go. I'm adding a half circle with my dark green and then I'm gonna stop, rinse my brush and switch to blue. You can really see here how I'm carefully leaving that little bit of white space between my green and my blue paint and I'm stopping before I make a full blue circle. I'm gonna switch colors and continue with a darker blue. I recommend making a half to three quarter rotation around your circle with this new blue color. Don't make a full circle with it. Stop before you get to that point and switch colors. I'm gonna fill in here with just a tiny bit of purple. You can see here in my final painting that I went back and added a tiny bit of red in the upper corners after my paint dried. I thought it would be fun to pause at this point in my video and see what my 14-year-old niece, Mara, is up to. Hey, Mara, what are you up to? I'm filming a disturbing video with cooked human faces. Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know how it turns out. Okay, well, let's start on our next painting now. Just as with my first painting, I'm taking my one inch flat brush and adding a thin, even layer of clear water over my paper. I'm going to start with some orange paint in my bottom right hand corner and I'm gonna paint the shape kind of like an L fell over. Now I'm gonna take my yellow paint and paint kind of a curved shape right inside of this, trying to leave a little bit of white space between the orange and the yellow as usual. 
Now I'm going to take some light green paint and trace the inside of that yellow color, leaving a little bit of space between the two colors. Notice how I'm making a fairly irregular shape with my brush. This makes my painting look more interesting. Now I'm gonna add the dark green. Make that line nice and wobbly. And don't forget to leave some white space between each color. Next I'm gonna add some light blue. Look how pretty that looks. I'm gonna make my blue a little bit thicker on the right cause I feel like it. Now it's time to add some dark blue. Now add some purple. <laughs> I have a purple sleeping bag so I had to try that. If at any point your colors are running together more than you want them to, you can dab up the excess water with a paper towel. After my painting dried, I went back and added a little bit of red to the bottom right hand corner and the center in the purple. I got a baby niece here who really wants to go for a walk, so we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back. And we're back. Okay, I'm gonna set up my third painting a little differently. Are you ready to see it? Again, I'm gonna start out by adding a thin, even layer of clear water with my one inch flat brush. From the right side of the middle of my paper, I'm gonna paint a short red line, and make it a little bit wobbly. Now I'm gonna add a layer of orange around it. Don't forget to leave that white space between the orange and the red. Now I'm going to take some yellow paint and make a circle around my orange. I'm going to follow that with some light green. Make sure your paper stays nice and wet. If it starts to dry out, you can take that one inch flat brush and re-wet it. Time to add some dark green. And some light blue. Try making your line nice and wobbly and randomly vary the thickness of your line. So in some places it's really thick and in other places it gets really thin. This will make your painting look more interesting. Doing some dark blue here. Now add some purple. I <laughs> can't help myself. When you're all done, if you'd like your paintings to dry more quickly, try using a hair dryer. When you're done painting, you can gently remove the painter's tape. Pull the tape off really slowly, and if the paper starts to tear, stop and try to pull gently from the other direction. Da -da -da -da. If you end up doing this project, be sure to let me know how it goes in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. I teach super fun live online art classes to kids as well as to adults. You can find out more information by visiting my website, rainbowparrotart.com. If you enjoyed watching today's video, be sure to check out my other videos. I have so many super fun projects on this station and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell icon so you'll get notifications when I put out new videos. You might enjoy watching one of these videos next. Alright, see you soon. Now add some purple. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>